Hi everyone and welcome to another birthday card video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint two more birthday cards, one being a foliage wreath and the second one being more of a beachy scene. So let's just get right into it. For the first one, we're going to start off with that really nice uh, leafy sort of wreath. And the easiest thing to do is to grab something circular, either a glass or a lid. I used a lid of a little container that I had. Just make sure that it fits the size of your paper and just trace a perfect circle. This is really important because it helps keep your wreath really neat looking. If the leaves are sort of angled in the right way that they insinuate a perfect circle, it really makes the whole design and your whole painting come together in a really um, synchronous way. So what you're going to basically do after you've traced your circle, you want to take different shades of green and simply paint on foliage leaves in a circular pattern. If you've watched one of my previous wreath tutorials, you would have uh, heard me say that you want to basically start the stem, the first stem of each new branch that you're painting, right on the circular border and slowly branch off, off of the circle. This creates this really nice flowy pattern and it allows you to start the next branch right on the circle because there's a little bit of space between the previous uh, branch that has angled upwards and the start of your new branch. You also want to make sure that you're using different shades of green or different colors if you're preferring more of a colorful design uh, with every new branch that you paint. It's really hard to explain how exactly I paint these leaves, but it really does help if you have a round brush. Uh, and this is a particular type of brush. So for example, I'm using the round brush size 14 by Grumbacher. And this is an excellent brush. I use it for every single painting, basically. Uh, whether it's thin lines, thick lines, this brush does it all. And I have linked it below in the description if you're interested in adding it to your collection. But I do believe that it makes a world of a difference. So you want to continue with this flowy, leafy pattern until you've completely joined your leaves together in a perfect circle. And you can even add some leaves uh, exiting into the interior of the circle if you want to fill up some of the white space, because I understand sometimes you don't even want to write anything in the center and you just want to paint a pretty leaf or a pretty uh, wreath, and that's totally okay. Here you can see me using some scotch tape to cover up the center and flick some uh, dots onto the painting just to make it even more fun. And after you've done that, you can pencil in your happy birthday greeting. It, I always pencil mine in because I'm bound to make some sort of spelling error or mistake and then just go over it with a black marker. Moving on to the second design, I have been on a beach and wave painting kick lately, so I decided to incorporate a beachy design into one of my happy birthday cards. So basically, you can choose to tape the border of your card if you choose to, but it's not necessary. I used regular scotch tape. And then you're going to create a gradient using two colors, a blue for the water and sort of a, a light, palish tone for the uh, sand. And you're going to make sure that those two meet in the middle and gradually fade into one another. And you can use several different layers just to ensure that you have the opacity that you want and also to ensure that the colors blend in, into one another uh, very gradually because you want it to look natural. Once your layers have dried and you're happy with the opacity, you want to start painting the waves. Now I made the mistake of starting to paint the waves when the layers below were still a little bit wet. Don't make this mistake because it can cause lots of problems from the cauliflower effect to just kind of ruining the uh, gradients that you worked so hard to create. So just make sure your base layers are completely dry. But once they are dry, you're going to paint three or four uh, kind of lines that insinuate waves and you're going to gradually fade them out. 
and this shaded part is going to be the darker part of the wave when it's starting to curl over if you you know have an idea of what a wave looks like and I know right now it looks a little bit chaotic but once we add the details with white acrylic paint it's going to look absolutely stunning so just trust me on this and trust the process but again wait until the base layers are dry so that you are not stuck doing what I'm doing here and constantly trying to fix the bleeding of the waves. In the meantime, I just want to remind you guys to hit the like button if you haven't already if you're enjoying this video. It really helps me grow my channel and also consider subscribing. I do put out two videos every single week for your viewing pleasure. Here you can just see me going over some of the waves again because I wanted to really make that contrast between the shadows of the waves and the rest of the painting. Again, once your layers have completely dried, you're going to add the fun part, which are those white splashy foamy details of waves. So here I'm using white acrylic paint, but you can choose any sort of opaque pigment. So white ink works as well, or maybe white gouache, but I'm using white acrylic paint. And basically you want to outline those waves, the shadows of the waves rather, that you painted earlier. And you also want to paint these tiny little circles uh, bordering that line that you created. Just make sure they are not perfect circles. You want them to sort of be rough looking. Just keep in mind that the further that you get away from that original border line that you painted, the bigger and rougher that you want those circles to be. More like pentagon shapes or something of that sort. You can even add some loose lines coming um, just above those original circles just to insinuate that the foam from the wave has sort of faded uh, the farther away it is from the crash of the wave. You can also choose to increase the intensity of those shadows like you saw me doing earlier. Don't forget to add your happy birthday greeting once your card has completely dried and you're all finished. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial today guys and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also check out my previous birthday card tutorials. Have a great day!